So, friends, good afternoon. It is a joy of my life to be here with you. I have been looking forward to this for a long time, and it is a wonderful thing to welcome you to Belfast on your last day. I've seen some of you during the, la the last week, and I've seen some of you over the last year when we've been um, part of conversations about welcoming you here, and it is a real pleasure so, to have you in our city. I want to speak with you today about some of the ways in which community is part of the healing of the world. And to do that, I want to talk about a few communities. I'll speak with you about the Corrymeela community. I'll speak with you about the community of the people of Ireland. I'll speak with you also about the story of St. Patrick. And I'll speak with you a little bit about the little that I know about the L'Arche community. And with each of these communities, I want to speak about their name and their pain and their gift to the world, their bruise also, and the vessel that they are to the world. But before I should do that, I know I should introduce myself. My name is Podrig, which is the Irish way of saying Patrick. Podrig means noble. And my pain is that certainly for many years, I never felt like I belonged anywhere. I was a person who didn't fit in. I had dreams of belonging, and I had dreams of home, and I had dreams of friendship, but I was filled with loneliness and pain. Throughout the talk today, we're going to have some music from Helen. Sometimes I'll ask you to think about doing something do during that time of music. You're welcome to do that or not. But you're welcome to also to sit and to just let the music, which is music from Ireland and Scotland, be part of the welcome to you as we think about community. Because music, too, is its own community. So first of all, Helen is going to play some now. And I'd like you, without words, to welcome each other, maybe by a handshake, a touch, a smile, looking at each other in the eye. I once wrote a poem about loneliness. This is the poem. L is for lonely because that's what I've been. O is for ordinary because these days it seems to me that loneliness is ordinary and ordinary is fine and ordinary is going to be here for a while. N is for nothing and the nothing is not lonely. The lonely is just ordinary, but the nothing is void. Lonely I can deal with, and the ordinary is fine, but the nothing really scares me with its deep, vacant eyes. E is for everyone, and everyone's a little I. Everyone's a little lonely, a little happy, a little shy. Everyone's an anyone, and anyone could be me the poor and the persecuted, the pure and the meek. L is for licking the wound where I inscribed on my own skin with my blood ink, the yearning I can't hide. And Y is for yonder, and yonder is not here, and right here is yonder to someone who's not here. And yonder rhymes with wander, and wander rhymes with love, and all love is a little lonely, made of ordinary stuff. 
Helen's going to play the music again. And what I'd like you to do is to recognize that you are by yourself. And by yourself, you are loved. So maybe close your eyes or just sit with your own thoughts as Helen plays, knowing that you are loved and protected. I think that everybody knows what a bit of loneliness is like. And this perhaps is a way that we can be a gift to the world. If we know our own loneliness, we might be a gift to the world because the world has much loneliness and we will never solve it all, but we can be a part of friendship that is at the heart of the world. This has been the case for me. My loneliness has been my greatest teacher. I was told that because I'm gay, I couldn't be part of the church community. And that's okay. I know it was other people's fear that told me that. But instead of destroying myself, I found others who also were isolated. And community occurs in these places. So my loneliness has been something that has been a gift back to me, and maybe something that has called me to be a gift to my world. My bruise is that sometimes I think I need to keep everybody happy. My bruise is the thing that I keep on coming back to, the thing that I keep stumbling over, the part of me that might always hurt a little, sometimes a lot, and that's okay too. For me, my vessel, the thing I will always travel in, is the love of story and hospitality. I love telling stories, I love hearing stories, I love the love of friends, and for me, I am never happier than when I have friends around my table with stories and songs and love and food and company. I'm the leader of a community, the Corrymeela community, and Corrymeela too has a story. The name Corrymeela means lumpy place. Corrymeela is a place of peace and reconciliation for Ireland. We're the oldest peace and reconciliation community here. And our work is important because so many people here disagree about here. Are we now in a part of the United Kingdom? For some, we are. Are we now in a part of Ireland? For some, we are. Is it both? For some, it is. Some only wanted to be one, and many people killed and were killed.
for the desire to make it only one thing. If you're going to try to be a place of peace in the middle of such division, it can be a nice idea that it will be full of harmony and easy and happiness. But peace is rarely easy. Peace is complicated. I know that you know this because you live in community. Community is not always easy. Community isn't about perfect harmony. Community is about how we live with each other, even when we're arguing. It's about arguing in a way where we don't hurt each other too much. So Karamila does not mean easy harmony. It means lumpy crossing place. It means walking across a field full of stones. The field where our house is has a beautiful vision, but we need to help each other to see this vision, to walk across the field. And the gift of Karimila is a gift that comes from our own pain. The people who are part of Karimila are part of the problems of our world. We're part of the problem that made such division and violence and separation here. And we too sometimes wish that certain people weren't part of our city or of our community. We imagine that life would be easier without them. And this is part of our pain and our gift. If we can begin to tell the truth about this, if we can recognize that we are part of the problem, then we begin to recognize that we might be also part of the solution. For Karimila, our bruise is that we keep on making the same mistakes. Each time we think we have it sorted, we realize again that we're making the same mistake in thinking that one person or another person is the problem. The only way that we keep on making something better for us is trying every day to be people of courage. Every single day, we start off with a simple prayer, a prayer for courage. And I'd like to read this prayer with you now. Courage comes from the heart, and we are always welcomed by God, the Cree of all being. We bear witness to our faith, knowing that we are called to live lives of courage, love, and reconciliation in the ordinary and extraordinary moments of each day. We bear witness to, to our failures and our complicity in the fractures of our world. May we be courageous today. May we learn today. May we love today. As Helen plays the next piece of music, I'd like you to consider standing if you're able and walking with courage, maybe on the spot, but you're also, also welcome to walk around. We'll do this in silence without speaking to each other, but I'd like you to consider walking on the spot with courage or walking around as you wish with courage or sitting with courage too.
For us in Corimila, our vessel is story and hospitality. We believe that people, even people who have been involved in fighting and dividing themselves and others, we believe that all people can come around a table to be with each other in shared hunger, in shared story, and in a shared work for a better way of living well with each other. I want to speak now about Patrick, patron saint of Ireland. When I think of Patrick, I think of our shared name, me and him. It's also the name of my dad, and my granddad, and my great granddad. <laughs> Patrick originally was from the island of Britain, and he perhaps was actually noble by birth, unlike me. We don't know much about Patrick, we do know that when he was a young man, he was kidnapped and brought by pirates to Ireland. This was a pain and a burden to him. He was alone, working long days and long nights, forced to farm lands that weren't his own. He needed to learn a new language, and he felt extraordinarily isolated and alone. Where before, it doesn't seem like Patrick was interested in faith. When he comes to captivity in Ireland, he turns to prayers. He says that he prays up to 100 prayers a day. This was a pain for him to be exiled from his family, to be frightened, to be cold, to be away, to be in the care of people who didn't care for him. He was weighed down. But his pain, like all of ours, was the place where he was also called to be a gift. He escaped, but he couldn't leave everything behind. Patrick tried to find a life elsewhere, entering the church, but his dreams were full of Ireland. Come back, come back, come back, the people of Ireland said to him in his dream. And eventually, that's what he did. After many years, he came back to the place that he thought he so desperately wanted to leave. This is true for so many of us. The American poet Mary Oliver has a poem that she calls The Uses of Sorrow. She says, Someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness. It took me years to, to realize that this too was a gift. This is not easy at all. It is a bruise that we carry into our own world. The things that have been most painful for us are the things that are the places of our gift to the world, and they still are sometimes painful for us. It is not easy, but it is a gift that we might be able to offer. The vessel of St. Patrick was the vessel of his story. He looked around him, and he saw that God was in the land, and in the land all around him he found strength. He wrote a prayer. And I'll read a little bit of the prayer. He says the following. I arise today through the strength of heaven. Light of sun, radiance of moon, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of the sea, stability of earth, firmness of land. I'd like to, you to think of the landscape where you live. Close your eyes and think of the land where you live. The sea, the earth, the buildings, the city, the trees, the walls, the beds, the kitchen table, the chairs, the thing you drink your water from. See those things and seeing them in your eye, let your prayer be for strength from everything that surrounds you.
I think it's clear what wisdom tell us, tells us, although this doesn't make it any easier. I think wisdom tells us that there is something true and noble and important about the names that we have, that our names tell us something about our gift to the world. And our pain is sometimes the thing that hits us where it hurts us the most. We can be tempted to believe that pain is our name, but our name goes deeper than this, somehow deeper than the experience of pain is the possibility of vocation and gift. But this gift is usually a gift for others, not for ourselves. If we can find the courage at our heart to give this gift, it might be that we can find a way to live with our pain and our bruises, the repeated mistakes that we make, because sharing is also something called love. And love is the great vessel that we are to sail in. We don't always know our destination because somehow our destination is made better for us by being with each other. We share food and nurture in our vessel, food and story and life and hopes and pain. And our names and our bruises also are with us in our vessel of story. In Irish, one of the ways of saying, I love you, is, you are my music. Machiolhu, that's how we say it in Irish. Machiolhu, you are my music. Let us think of this. Look around now as the music plays. As you hear the music, let us look around and think, you are my music. The people you know, the people you don't know, the people you love, the people you find it difficult to love. You are my music. Look around. What I know about the Larsh community is that you're named after a great story found at the heart of so many of the world's religions. This is the story of humanity being saved together in a boat. Humanity all together. Our survival depends on all kinds of people being together in a place of flourishing. This is a space of closeness, you know this well, of people being near people, 
of arguments, of hunger, of eating, of sleep, of interrupted sleep. The ark would not have been a quiet place. I understand from having visited L'Arche Belfast that L'Arche communities are rarely quiet, are places of noise and joy and singing and music and talk and arguments about whether you put the milk in first or second to your tea, stories of forgiveness, stories of pain, stories of difficulty, stories of promise, a gift and a bruise and a joy and a love and a music of story. I understand that this is the same, whether it's a mealtime, a meeting, a group of leaders, a group of core members, a group of new people who form themselves around L'Arche for their friendship, a group of people who are new to L'Arche. And I know that you know that L'Arche is a place where the great word of God and the great name of God, love, is the word at the heart of the day. And what does it mean to love in the middle of our brokenness? What does it mean to be a broken people in a world that does not acknowledge its own brokenness? What does it mean to love in a world where people are frightened of being unlovable? What does it mean to know your own name in a world where people don't want to know your own name? These, I understand, are the great human questions at the center of all hope in humanity and at the center of your project of community. These can be your joy and your vocation and your pain also. In a world where people's lives are medicated so often, how is it that we can go to the deepest meaning of the word medicine, the art of healing? L'Arche, it seems to me, knows what might help the world, not because you're experts, but because you're not, because you know your own brokenness and you're not afraid of your own brokenness. Brokenness, I think, is the second language of all of humanity. You know this. Love is the first language. You also know this. Love and brokenness is what can help heal our world that is itself tired and frightened and anxious about compliances. Our medical world that is so frightened of everything that might happen without compliances. And we are so compliant with anxiety that we make more anxiety. How is it that we can be the art of healing living into a world that finds new ways to turn fear into policy. This is your pain and your gift. To be able to speak the language of both love and brokenness, you're always going to be between the languages of love and brokenness, loving each other and hurting each other, hurting each other and loving each other, offering love to a world even though you are hurting yourself hurting yourselves while you offer love to the world. These are, it seems to me, the twin languages of your deepest faithfulness. And your journey with each other is in this great ark of humanity. The word ark in the Jewish story of the great ark of Noah is a beautiful word. The word in Hebrew is tefach, and it means ark or a chest or a box. The Ark of Noah was huge. It was big enough for the world. But the same word is used in another story, another Jewish story. In this story, we have a frightened woman, a woman who was used to her people being treated poorly. This woman had a baby, and she was nervous that people would take the baby from her. So she took the baby. And she put the baby in a small box, a teva. She put the baby in the box and set the box afloat, a little box in a big river, a little ark in a world of anxiety. And this mother hoped that her love would be met with more love. And so the ark is as big and as small as the world. It is as small and as big of, as the story of all of your lives, as small and as big as the story of the lives of each of your communities. 
Each time I think of story, I think of the ways within which the whole world presents itself to us in small stories all the time. I know the other day you watched Larry's video. Each time I visit Larch Belfast and that Larch, Larch Belfast come to be with Carmela for a weekend every year, I think of the ways within which each of our stories holds the whole story of the world. A few years ago, I went to a classroom in Belfast and the classroom was of girls. They were 15 years old and they were full of grief because one of their classmates had died just the week before. She had, there had been a car accident, a bus accident, and she had been killed by a bus. It was a big mistake and the class were full of sadness. But the reason I went to the class is because the class had decided that they wished to write a letter to the bus driver because they knew it wasn't his fault. And so they asked me to help them write a letter. And I said, what do you want to say? And they said a few things. They said, Kira, our friend, was always full of life. And she used to say, stop worrying and try to be happier. So they wrote to this man who drove the bus and said, we're the friends of Kira. We understand that you are blaming yourself. Kira every day said, stop worrying and be a bit happier. They said, we don't blame you because it wasn't your fault. And then they sent the letter to him. A few months later, their teacher phoned me and said, the bus driver wrote a letter back and he called me in to see it. And the girls showed it to me. And the letter simply said, I will think about you every day for the rest of my life. Your letter moved me so much, I even showed my wife. <laughs> and then he said, thank you. These were people in grief speaking to a person in grief. One story, it's a small arc, but in it we see the whole world. We're gonna have a short musical break and maybe look around again. And you might wanna reach out again and touch each other, greet each other, hug each other, showing love in this room of community, knowing that we are full of the arcs of small lives here, and we are full of the arc of the big world here in this room.
<laughs> Subtle. <laughs> So, you know that this has been a place of great division here. You know that the story of Ireland and the story of Britain has been a story of great pain, with different people blaming different people. But when we go back to the story of our saint, our patron saint, that noble man of Britain, Patrick, we realize that going deeper into the story of him, at the heart of the relationship between Britain and Ireland, is a story of love and generosity and dreams and goodness and prayers and courage. And at the heart of that is a story of love, because he was loved by the people who wanted him. And he grew to love people that he never thought he'd grow to love. Us, the people of Ireland. Patrick grew to love us, and he brought us back to our own story. In the Irish language, there isn't a simple way to say the phrase, I love you. Love is not a verb in Irish, it's only a noun. And so we do come up with other ways to say it. When language is complicated, there's always a way around. You know this, you live this. Even if you can't say something, there's always touch, or a cup of tea, or a dance, or a meal, or a walk, or a way of looking at each other in the eye. When we feel that we know we love each other, not just when we say it, but when we know it, we can feel as if we are as alive as Helen's music. And this is what we say in Irish. Instead of saying, I love you, we say, you are my music. Machiolhu. You are my music. And as the music plays a final time now, I'd like you to look around at each other, again to look at each other. You're welcome to dance with each other. It'll be slightly faster. You know the stories of each other's lives. You know your names for yourself and the names for each other. You know your pain. You know your bruises. Sometimes you cause each other's pain or you cause each other's bruises in everything from policy writing to hospitality to making the dinner to deciding the name of a new house. We are each other's pain and bruise and gift and love. And we are on this journey together of being music with each other for the sake of ourselves and for everyone we meet. Let's take ourselves into the rhythm of this music and say to each other, you are my music, we are each other's music. Deeper than the heart of our pain is the heart of our story. And we will find our healing through that story and through knowing that and being each other's music. <laughs>